Hello and welcome back everyone. In this episode I want to show you how I created this fog effect in Unity. And I'm using the Amplify Shader Editor, so that is a paid asset. I recommend finding it on the Unity Asset Store using the link in the description. Um, it's definitely worthwhile, I wouldn't have been able to make this effect without it, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Um, but if I jump back into my scene view, um, you can see there's some fog coming up out of the scene, and then there's also a single plane acting as the depth element. So th this sort of like disappears into the fog. And if I was just using particle systems, it would look like this. Um, but I also have a plane on here, giving it that cool um, disappearing effect. And that, that's what I used the shader editor for. So th this isn't just a standard particle system. Um, so as far as the shader goes, I'm going to right click and create a new shader of type Amplify Surface Shader. I'm going to name this uh, depth fog 7 because this is my seventh attempt. Double click that to open it in the shader editor and now it looks like this. And I'm just going to name this Evan Daily slash depth fog 7 and compile. Now I also want to create a new material depth fog 7. And I'm just going to right, uh, click up here and go to Evan Daily Depth Fog 7. Now I want to put that on my fog plane. And uh, while we're at it, why don't we just disable these particle effects? So take these two and make them disappear. Um, so the, the fog still makes everything sort of disappear into the ground. It's just not nearly as bright. Um, so that's mainly why the particle systems were there in the first place. Um, leave play mode. And now I want to click on my fog plane and give it the new material. And right now you can see it's receiving shadows, that's not very realistic. Um, and also, it's completely opaque, and the opacity field is grayed out, so we can't use that yet. So I'm going to compile this one more time, and then go over to blend mode. I want to change this to transparent and transparent. Now if I apply that, you should see the shadow shadows disappear. And that lets us know we're using the new transparent mode. If, if, the, sh if the shadows are still there on yours, um, you might have forgotten to choose your shader in your material settings up here. And now I'm just going to hit 1 and left click. And give this an opacity of 0.5, just, just so we can make sure everything's working. And now it's a little bit transparent, so we're good to go. Alright, so if we go back to the previous effect. Uh, depth of fog 5. If I go into play mode, you can see, uh, let's turn these particle systems off. There's, um, there's, there's obviously this effect where the, the wall sort of disappears into the fog. And then there's also some flat fog moving across the surface. Um, and so for that flat fog, I'm using the emission field, which is here. And then for the, for the disappearance effect, that's using the opacity field. Um, and, and that's really the main part of the fog, so that's one we're going to focus on in this video. Um, so, let's switch back quickly. Plane, depth of fog 7. And so right now, um, it's it's the same level of, of opacity the whole way across, but we need to fix that so, that so that it's really opaque down here, like it's really completely solid, and then really not opaque up here, or, or really transparent. So the opacity should be like 1 over here, and then roughly 0 at this point. Um, so to do that effect, we're going to use the Screen Position and Screen Depth nodes. So let's take the Screen Position, drop that in, and Screen Depth. And we're going to subtract one from the other. So that takes a Subtract node. Put this here, put this here. The W is essentially the distance from the camera, I believe. I I'm not totally sure about that. I should probably look at the source code for this node. I don't know exactly what the nodes do. I, I kind of just have to figure this out by trial and error at this point. Um, so if anybody watching this knows more about it than me, feel free to share. Um, but at this point, I'm subtracting these, and it's not exactly doing what I want. It's, it's really giving me a value close to 1. Um, and we might as well just drop this into opacity still. So that's a, that's a really opaque still. And that's because we're not using the right modes for these. 
Um, this should be float and normalize, and then this should be actually sorry. This I think this one should be screen space. Let's try that. Yeah, that worked. Um, and now you can see that there's this um, kind of rapid fade into the fog. And if you want to visualize what these nodes are doing, at any point you can really just like drag this into the emission value. And that shows you what it does. So the the screen position, or we could try albedo. Um, well, th this isn't doing exactly what I expected, but, but sometimes you can get a much better idea of what's happening by dragging these into the different fields. Um, so anyway, we have a basic idea of where we're going with this. So compile this again. We have kind of a fade here. So let's just multiply this by something. So I'm going to create a multiply node, and that would be M left click on the keyboard. Drop that on opacity, and I'm just going to multiply it by like 0.1. And now it's a much slower transition. Now, just to be safe, I think I want to put an absolute value node here. So I'm going to drop that between here and here. And then I'm also going to hit 1 and left click to create a float node. I'm going to make it a property so that it's visible in the inspector. And I'll just call it fog intensity. Min 0, max 1. and apply. And so that'll be our multiply value here. And right now it's, it's zero, so the fog completely disappeared. So let's click on our fog plane, click on the material, and now we can just play with this slider. All right, so I don't really like how quickly the fog disappears. Um, like right right here it's completely gone and then I go up and right about here that's the thickest I'm ever going to want it to be and so I'm only using like 0.1 to 0.4 here so I'm just going to quickly add a remap node and that's just going to essentially extend this range to the whole slider so I'm going to right click remap And I want to drop that right here. And we're going to keep the slider between 0 and 1 because I, I like that. Um, I feel like it's just nice to keep the keep it so clean. Um, but we're going to remap it to the range of 0.01 to 0.4. Apply. And now we can use the whole slider. And uh, we have a little bit more control. All right, so I'm going to leave it about there. And I'm a little bit surprised when I was, oh, you can kind of see it right here. Um, when I was working on this before the video, uh, there was these really harsh transitions. And, and yeah, you, sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. So, so right here, there's a line here. And if I sort of like go backward, the line disappears. Now it's just gone. I don't know how noticeable that is, but like right now it's like flashing on and off. And that's because this is casting shadows. So I'm going, I'm going to click on my material. And I want to scroll down to rendering options. I, I'm actually going to turn off the light sources. I'm just going to turn off everything just for the sake of it. Apply that. And then I also want to turn off cast shadows and receive shadows here. Um, and so now, now it's a little bit cloudier looking. And we never have that flashing fog effect. I mean flashing shadow effect. Um, so the next thing I want to do is clamp this because we might not want to have the fog be com so completely thick at the bottom um, So let's just give ourselves some control over that field. So I'm going to add a float node And I'm going to add a clamp node Feed this into the value actually I'm gonna feed this into the max now I'm going to call this um, fog max intensity and I'll give it a value of let's say 1 and actually the value is going to be from this multiply and then we're going to feed that into opacity 
and compile. And now, right now the fog max intensity got set back to zero, and so the most intense the fog can ever be is zero. If I bring this up, if I bring it up all the way, now the fog has the option of being completely opaque down here and out here. Um, so th this gives you the ability to kind of max out the intensity of your fog. And I, I like it at one, but it's nice to have the option to change the intensity. And I think I might leave it there for this video. Um, actually, why don't we add some color to this? So I'm going to hit 5 and left click to add a color node. Drop that onto... Why don't we try emission? And then just set this to like a nice green color. Compile. And there you go, you have some nice green fog. Um, I also used the texture coordinates and the panner nodes for mine so that there were like some flat clouds rolling across the top. Um, if you want me to do that, I'll do that in a follow-up video. I could also cover the node systems that I had made before. Uh, I'm sorry, the particle systems. Because uh, they give a lot more depth to the scene. Um, I'm also going to go back and make this color a property. And I'll just call it fog color. Apply. And now if we go back to the fog plane, we can um, tweak this color. Alright, so I hope that was useful, and if you want me to do a follow-up video, let me know. Because I, I could do the um, albedo and emission, like clouds rolling across the top. And then I could also show you how I made the particle systems. Um, so just let me know if you want me to do that, and I'll see you guys next time.